As one of my walking buddies, Stephanie, and I take our morning walks in the Forest Preserve, we discuss many subjects. One is food and recipes. She introduced me to 16 bean soup, and when each one of you entered, you probably got a bag of beans. So this is the 16 bean soup. Um, she told me where to find the beans, where to find this bag, how to prepare the meal, and that if I try it once, I would be hooked. I thought to myself, I did not know there were 16 different types of beans, <laughs> but there are. At first, I was hesitant because my family eats beans, but putting 16 upon them at one time was kind of a stretch. And then I thought mixing these different types to, of taste together, I could see it not turning out to be too edible. This is the company's description of the bean package and the recipe. Festive in appearance, this colorful 16 bean soup mix is packed with goodness. A delicious mixture of flavors and textures combined to create a palatable main course dish that can easily climb to the top of your list of healthy comfort foods. This fantastic soup can be considered a wellness food because of the high content of vitamins and nutrients it provides. I went to the store and just as Stephanie said, the 16 beans in one bag were sitting on the shelf. Never paid it any attention before. I prepared the beans as she told me with meat and rice on the side and just as she said, it was delicious and it was a hit with my family. The savory flavor that came from these beans being cooked together was something I had not experienced before. I really thought they would lose their shape, their taste, or identifying property. But to my surprise, they did not. I could still identify the pinto bean, the lima bean, the lentil bean, the white bean, the black bean, etc and the flavoring of them all coming together was comforting and quite tasty. I started thinking, Lord, as I look at this bag of beans, I see your people. Festive, colorful, mixture of flavors, high in content of experiences and input. I see your people in this bag, in this world, together fighting to get along fighting to accept one another, fighting to be first or be the only one that matters. Although we have many differences, we are still your creation, created in your image. If we could come together, it would be com a comfort and palatable example for others to follow because we would be following your two greatest commandments. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. As we look at the epistle of 1 John, the third chapter, it was written to dispel doubts and to build assurance by presenting a clear picture of Christ and a true example of love. Jesus was and is God in the flesh and God in focus, seen, heard, and touched by the author John. John the first chapter, fourth verse, I'm sorry, John the first chapter, first through the fourth verse, in the beginning was the Word, 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. John walked and talked with Jesus, he saw him heal, heard him teach, watched him die, saw him rise, ascend to heaven, and be a prime example of love. John knew God because he lived with Jesus and had seen him work, and John enjoyed the fellowship with God and the Son. To share his experience, John writes, the dear children, presenting God as light, love, and life, explaining what it means to have fellowship with God at the same time false teachers enter the church, denying the incarnation of Christ. John wrote this letter to correct those serious errors. John's letter is a model for us to follow as we combat modern heresies and truth today. The first part of John, the first part of 1 John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10, tells us how we are living as children of God, and God is the light. And some do not know we are children of God because they do not know God. As children of God, we should work to live a righteous life. Notice I did not say perfect. Living a righteous life would mean we look at each other as children of God, one big family, and we love each other as God loves us. Pastor Veronica preached in her series a few weeks ago about being like Christ. The Christian life is a process of becoming more like Christ. Romans, the 8th chapter, the 29th verse reads, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. The latter part of 1 John, the 3rd chapter, verses 20 through 24, teaches that God is life. Whomever believes in God's Son has eternal life. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He is all we need. No need to wait for eternal life because it begins the moment you believe and accept Jesus. You do not need to work for it because it is already yours. You do not need to worry about it because you have been given eternal life by God himself and it is guaranteed. Our main focus today is the middle part of the passage, verses 11 through 19, and the subject of love. God is love. If God is love and we believe God, how do we demonstrate love to one another? In these verses, John teaches us three things. Love one another, love with sacrifice, and love with action. Verses 11 through 15, love one another. Some people at this time had left the church and began to spread false truths. Here, John was teaching and counteracting false truth with the love of Christ. The opposite of love is hatred. John tells us, do not belong to the evil one who teaches hatred. Do not be like Cain who murdered his brother due to hatred. Hatred can lead to murder. We know murder in the physical sense, but what about in the spiritual sense? We murder when we harbor hatred in our hearts towards one another. I have realized that hatred often stems from not knowing or understanding those that are different from us. John tells us to be righteous. If we are ever going to error, error on the side of righteousness. And do not be surprised that the world hates you for doing so. So as I look at these beings, I see myself in this bag, but I see my brothers and sisters who are different, who are different but serve the same purpose as I. And when we come together and love on one another, according to the 133rd number of Psalm, God is pleased. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. 
For harmony is a precious, is as precious as uh, the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. Verses 16, 16 through 17, love with sacrifice. Most Christians know John 3.16, as I quoted earlier. But how many of us know 1 John third chapter 16? This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ has laid down his life for us, and we are to lay down our life for each other. Here is an example of a story I heard. Two mountain climbers were walking along the side of a narrow mountain path, unknowingly towards one another. The lane was narrow enough where only one person could pass at a time. As they approached one another, they eyed each other and thought the same thing. How am I going to pass this narrow road? Only one can pass at a time. The world teaches, due to self-preservation, that only one can pass. The world teaches to be selfish, which is an insensitive attitude that shows itself in disregarding others' good as I see my own interest. In other words, one of the climbers would have to be knocked off the edge or one would need to be pushed back for the other to pass. But Jesus teaches us that real love requires sacrifice. Sacrifice is where one would lay down his life for the other to pass over. The one that bowed down would show enough humility, enough sacrifice, enough love for the other, they both could pass and continue on their journey. Verses 18 through 19, love with actions and truth. One way we love in action and in truth is to see a need and help or assist one another. Parts of Jesus' ministry was his love for people. He healed the blind, the lame, the brokenhearted, the broken spirit, the medical issues of blood and leprosy, fed the hungry, took up for those that were being bullied. We see people in our everyday lives that need help. It is easy for us to, it is easy for us to say that they put themselves in that situation, or it's not my problem. Easy for us to walk past them lying there and in need of help. But just as the despised Good Samaritan felt compassion and mercy for the wounded stranger in the ditch, so should we for God's children. The despised Good Samaritan soothed the wounds of the stranger with olive oil and wine, bandaged him, put him on his own donkey, and took the stranger to an inn where the Samaritan took good care of him. The next day, the Samaritan handed the innkeeper two silver coins and ask the innkeeper to take care of the stranger, and if there is a debt to pay, I will pay the next time I am here. Showing mercy is an example of showing true love. Showing love is not always comfortable. Showing love to those that hate you, that persecute you, or you know that just don't like you is a work of the Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us. I believe it can be done when we put forth a, fine, a, a firm effort. Yes. I want to live in a community of different beings mm. where we love, support, and accept and help one another. I asked a few people when I was explaining about my sermon, I um, asked a few people about what do you think about this? What do you think about these beings living together? And a few of them told me, I was being naive. A um, few told me that I was dreaming. We're not built that way. But I beg to differ. God understood and already made provisions for our differences. And just as during Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell upon the believers and they began to speak in the tongue of their many native languages, 
and it was understood, so such there is a place, despite what the world says, where we can live in harmony with one another and our differences. Christianity is not limited to one race or group. God speaks to all, regardless of race, color, nationality, gender, or language. So as I leave you, I would challenge you this week to work to express real sacrificial love. Would you join me in preparing and serving 16 bean soup? Let's be the bag of beans. See the different beans. See the community and see the world. Consult God and ask, who can I work to love this week? The mean cashier at the grocery store? A non-cooperative co-worker? A tense spouse? A tough neighbor? With all the war, racism, sexism, strife, etc., that is going on in the world these days, we need more love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. And as I was preparing this, I thought about this um, 1985 song that, we, that was a really big hit during a, a certain time, during that time. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true, we make a better day, just you and me. Amen.